Stephanie Sharp. I'm here at Thomasville Center for the Arts. We are having our second Saturday today, and this is just a chance for us to showcase our programs with exhibition and education. So we have several workshops going on, and our gallery is open. Right now, I am in a workshop with our public art director, Darlene Taylor. So Darlene is here with me. And Darlene, we're just gonna ask, talk about public art a little bit before we get into our actual workshop. So tell us why public art? So public art is important because it activates um, underdeveloped corridors. It brings communities together with like-minded um, interests. It activates places that have been dead for a long time in a community. And it's just fun to look at. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about here in our community in Thomasville. Do we have public art around here? What, I mean, tell us about that. How, how did that come to be? Okay, we've been doing public art since 2011, and it started with a, a, an event called Flaunt. And so in 2014, our Flaunt event was called Pop It Up. Our community um, put it, installed an amphitheater in the creative district, and in order to activate it, we put art around it. So we brought in 22 pop-up shops, and we showed the community what it could look like if our West Jackson Street corridor were filled with vibrant shops and art and just performance, and just it was activated. So public art has gotten us more curious and been enjoyable to look at, but it has also helped to stimulate our community, hasn't it? It's started conversations and it's it's been a game changer really in our downtown community. Um, that was the Yellow Bikes with Pop It Up, wasn't it? Yes. Um, I'm sure some of y'all remember the Yellow Bikes. So what if I'm at home, you know, it's Corona time and my family, we're looking for things to do here in our community that we can still stay safe and we can go out and explore. So tell us about right now what's happening in public art in Thomasville or what's coming, like what can we expect? Okay, before I do that, I just wanna mention the yellow bikes. Um, it's a perfect example of how a piece of art can um, stimulate conversations. So we chose the yellow bikes because West Jackson Street was under construction, so we used construction yellow, and the bikes were significant because we were building a new bike trail. So it gave you an opportunity, when people ask why the yellow bikes, you could talk about it. So that is why it's, it's a cool thing. Today we have a lot going on. We've, um, um, after Pop It Up, we adopted a vacant lot on the West Jackson Street corridor, and We've been programming it. It started as an empty lot that was overgrown and really an eyesore in the middle of our little community. And we now have lighting and um, we have... Um, you have seating. I, I seating. like to go there and eat my lunch. Yeah, electrical, landscape, yeah. shade sales. We continue to add to it, but we also bring in artists to do murals that are temporary. We don't like to paint on our historic bricks. and. Um, Again, we change it out three times a year, and there's always some sort of thoughtful um, programming or thoughtful education behind it, so it's um, intentional. And we, you can find a new installation in the fall, in the spring, and in the summer. Awesome. So the large-scale alligator mural was up there for a while over the summer, and so now we are in a transition period, right? And so what's coming next? Okay, so this vacant lot is now um, titled The Unvacant Lot. So um, we are working on the Wallach Arts Festival this year, and in light of COVID and the restrictions on gathering, we had to get creative and pivot. So we pivoted to focus more on public art so that people can still not have that gloomy feeling of we can't see anything exciting and interesting or each other. So we have um, public art everywhere. We are bringing in... Um, First of all, we are focusing on our Red Hills region and the importance of the flora and fauna. And um, we have three installations happening. One is the flora, and that is, I'm bringing in 25 painters and they're painting on really duck pipe pole wraps is what we call them. And they are painting flora that is fire tolerant. 
We are partnering with Tall Timbers and they have given us the list of fire tolerant plants that either rely on or can survive the fire. And it gives our community an opportunity to realize that these things that they consider to be a weed or that they just see in the middle of the median on the highway are really significant and they have a lot of importance behind them. So each one of those pole wraps will have a card on it that you can read about what's important about that flower and how it relates to the control burn. So that's cool. That's one. That's awesome. And I have already learned so much. I'm not from this area originally. And so I didn't realize just, I didn't even know about these flowers, honestly. And so I've learned so much just by looking at what the artists have already dropped off. And I'm so excited. There will be education layered into this so that as you're walking and looking closer at these, I know you said there'll be cards that'll tell us more about each one. Um, and we'll learn a little bit more about the artists too, won't we? Yes, absolutely. The other thing is that um, we have 25 murals and there are um, four te um, five teams, each doing five murals. Um, there's, they're all single teams except for one team of two. And they have a theme of, that relates to the Red Hills region, like the lay of the land is about our hunting landscape. We have birds of a feather about the birds that we hunt and that we are our feathered friends. We have um, living on the land, which are those animals that you wouldn't necessarily pet, like snakes and <laughs> um, foxes. And we have on the hunt, which is about our hunting customs. And then we have, um, the last one is, I can't remember, but anyway. <laughs> That's so great. And so these are going to be all over downtown, right? Yes, they'll be and all over. So when will they start to be installed? When will people start seeing them appearing? Um, the final week in October, you'll see murals go up. And then the first week in November, the pole wraps for our first opening on November 6th. Awesome. So everybody keep your eyes peeled for all of the public art that's coming and make sure you take some time to really explore it and go a little deeper. So today we are also working on something that goes along with the projects you just talked about. So tell us what we are actually going to be painting today. Well, first I should tell you that one of the installations is the Unbake a Lot. And we have a mural artist, Joe Cowdery, doing a permanent mural in the back and on the ground. And in the front, we are, um, he's about landscape, so we are focusing on tree rings. So the installation is about tree rings and how tree rings are affected with the control burn. So we just wanna bring attention and education to that. So today we thought we would do a liquid pour tree ring. Awesome, so Darlene is gonna show me how to do this. I'm gonna mask up so I can get whatever materials I need. I have never done this before. And um, so you're gonna to have to walk me through how this happens. So what do we do first? I have some tree rings that look like they've already been painted. Yes. So that's where we're starting. That's one way to start, but it's okay. for the purposes of today to get more of a more effective look, we would do that. So first thing you'll need is on um, this product called Floetrol, and I'm sure there are lots of different kinds out there, but this is the one that we prefer to use. And then you would need some sort of acrylic paint. Okay, so and can I just grab orange? Sure. And um, you would put a mixture of 50-50. So I've left this one so that you can see. You just put 50% acrylic, 50% Floetrol. And then you'll just shake it up. So you want to shake yourself really good, Stephanie. What, what do I mix it in? Can no, I it's already it? in there. Oh, it's already in there mixed yeah, together. Then, oh, okay. You just couldn't see it. So. Awesome. You just want to shake it really, really well. And um, take a little cup. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll just switch. And you will, um, let's see. you will turn this on the edge and pour down the corner like this. So imagine that's a, okay. Okay, and then we'll switch, leave it leaned over. Hold on, I, I don't think I'm putting enough. <laughs> okay, just take your time. Is that too much, not enough? No, it depends. Now, the, the least, the, see, like mine is more than yours. That means my ring is going to end up being thicker. So that's okay. You can leave oh. yours smaller or make it thicker. Okay, so now what do I do? Now you, on the, in the same spot, as oh. though you were just continuing to pour, you add the second layer. Interesting. Now, how much does it matter? Is it just... Really, this is probably enough for what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now you would just choose a color that you want to pour against. I think I'm going to pour against this blue. Okay. So I'll pick this one. And you literally flip it over and then pick it up. I don't know how well this is going to turn out. It seems a little thick, but it doesn't matter. You cannot mess this up. There's no way to mess Are it up. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, then, okay. and then um, a lot of times we just turn the cup over and leave it down because what happens is when the paint dries, after all the paint rolls out, it becomes a skin like this. So you use everything. And then, Mine doesn't look very big. It's okay. It doesn't Wait, have to be. And then you just it? turn it and it flows. Look at that. Mine looks kind of like a candy corn. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so there's lots of ways to do it. Awesome. And some paints like oranges and reds are usually thicker. So it's kind of probably. Interesting. This is very therapeutic. Oh my gosh, it's addicting, really. So anybody can do this at home with acrylic paint and flow trawl. Can you, exactly. what, what kind of surfaces? And you see, you can actually then just flip it like this and yeah. it becomes. What so, kind of surfaces can you do this on? You can do it on anything. Really? I mean, I'll show you some examples. So let me go ahead and just get this where it's not too thick. Because it takes probably at least two days for you know, this amount to, to dry, if not more. I mean, it takes a while for it to dry. You can just roll it and see. I want the blue to stay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to continue to just let it roll around. And then you can take it back to the middle if you want, just to kind of. It's almost like coffee art, I think, about it. Oh. <laughs> latte art. Because yeah. I see people pulling them. You can make hearts and all kinds of things. So there's that one. And um, so, so, so for example. This is a great example of a group that did one together. Oh, wow. So, that is awesome. So, that's really cool. Um, we've been working with Dash Tie, and they've been coming in and learning how to do this. So, they are very in, um, instrumental in part of our installation. So, they are doing these stumps. These are their skins that they worked on. Awesome. Um, and so... It's almost like if you slice it in, what you would learn behind it, but you do it through art. Yeah. And one of, um, another, these are some of the finished products that they, some of the pieces they've done. By, so you layer it on top of each other? You just continue, that? it's like a bullseye, cool. you know? Just like a tree ring, some, see this is one where she used a lot of pink, but not a lot of white, so. It's just art. That's awesome. Art with a purpose. So will we see these some in the lot? Is that where they're headed? You'll see you'll see a lot of different things in the lot, but yes, the stumps will be will end up in the lot and they will be complete when you see them. Awesome. All right, thank you so much for sharing with us and teaching me this new technique. I'm going to keep pouring because this is fun. Yes. Um and so Check out our other workshops coming today. We have um, several more, and you can also come and visit our galleries. They're open. Whoa.